about uh, yeah consulting is um, I think so as a PhD student I'm so used to going very deep into certain topics but then staying within the same topic for the whole time of my PhD but I'd just like to take those like you know that skill set of uh, being analytical and uh, yeah. you know looking into insights uh, into my career as well and then I find consulting super interesting because one um, there is a yeah like you mentioned already andre there are so many different fields that one could uh, work on all these projects and there's always this uh, continuous learning process which really excites me so yeah that's why yeah i'm interested in consulting and on um, in addition to that i'm also a board member at uh, uh, graduate consulting club so i am handling consulting services this year uh, and uh, actually i also wanted to mention andre that vlada actually could not make it because uh, yeah she's she's not she doesn't have access uh, to internet at the moment so i just quickly joined the call uh, to to thank you for doing this session for the gcc members uh, and to welcome all the GCC members to this program as well. All right, uh, that's amazing. Then uh, let's basically maybe just uh, start with the uh, event uh, for now. Uh, sure. So, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of uh, Consulting Masters, on behalf of uh, GCC uh, Graduate Consulting Club of the Universities of ETH Zurich, uh, University of Basel and University of Zurich, hopefully I'm not <laughs> mistaken, <laughs> we would like to warmly welcome you to our exclusive event. Uh, and the objective today is to help you and solve together with you a very nice but lovely profitability uh, case. Um, yeah, we uh, basically were supposed to have uh, to host this event uh, together with uh, Vlada. Uh, Mikhailova, who is the president of this club. But uh, yeah, uh, we already have here Vinay uh, from GCC Consulting Club. So Vinay, can you maybe also uh, warmly welcome the participants and tell a little bit more about uh, uh, yourself and uh, GCC? Yeah, sure. So, yeah, hello everyone. Uh, so, the Graduate Consulting Club is uh, yeah the consulting club in in Zurich. So, students who are interested uh, in pursuing a career in consulting uh, are the members of our club. And with our activities, we try to facilitate your journey from the university to a career in consulting. And we do this in uh, in quite a few ways. So, we have. Uh, Monday case workshop, which happens every Monday evening between seven and nine. Andre actually uh, was there at one of our Monday case workshop, I think at the end of September. Uh, and you gave us a really nice introduction to what a case interview is. You also did a mock interview. So I'm really happy to join this uh, session as well. Uh, so other than this, we also have, uh, we partner with many consulting companies. So we have uh, events with uh, different consulting companies who have a presence in and around Zurich. So you can join the partner events too. To talk to you know your potential uh, employers uh, we also have uh, the consulting services so that's the that's the department that i had and we call it the bridge program so to bridge your uh, you know your skill set from academia to uh, to consulting and here you do um, uh, our, our members uh, actually get together and in groups they do a consulting project for, for a client. And the client could be a startup or an NGO in Switzerland. Uh, so the whole project lasts eight weeks and it happens every time uh, at the beginning of the semester. So actually we have in this session, Christian, uh, who is a project manager of the current uh, bridge program there. Uh, we have a really cool um, yeah, NGO from Lausanne who are into solar panels on agricultural fields. Really cool. So yeah, definitely if you're interested, uh, please uh, join our activities as well. And uh, again, Andre, I thank you very much uh, for organizing this event uh, with us. Uh, it's uh, yeah, it's a great opportunity for us and all the members of GCC to you know to learn from from your expertise and your experience of uh, already being a consultant and also being a recruiter before. And now in this new role in consulting masters, you actually help students get into consulting. And uh, yeah, we are happy to have you as a partner and thank you very much for this event. 
All right, thank you very much, uh, Vinay. Uh, let's basically, let's get it started. And I want to give a pass uh, to my team member, Anton Belakov. Yeah, hi everyone. I'm Anton Belakov. I'm your moderator for today's event. And today we have uh, a case workshop with in collaboration with GCC. And today you're gonna figure out how to solve a profitability case. So, uh let's get what are we what are we gonna have today in the agenda we, we are having a quick introduction i'm gonna i'm gonna tell you more about andrea homolenko our coach uh then we will have this profitability case simulation where you will find uh, how how to do it um feedback next and uh, and some next steps we will also have our q a session at the end where you will be free to um to ask your questions you can raise your hand, you can turn on the camera and um, so uh, let me please uh, introduce you. Uh, let me please introduce you, Andrea. Um, uh, he is he's our coach. Uh, he he had huge experience in, in consulting companies. He's worked for Roland Berger and for the past eight years, he's been um, and been uh, a part of uh, in interview um, recruiting team, sorry. And uh, he had passed like more than a hundred interviews with the candidates for, for top consulting companies. And for the past six years, he's been coaching people and helping them to get into the top consulting companies. Uh, and now maybe if, uh, if you don't mind, we would like to know each other better. Uh, you guys are, can you please write in the chat where are you from? Maybe two words, city, country, for those who haven't had the chance to introduce yourself. It will help us know each other better. Let me start. I'm I'm now based in Lisbon, in Portugal. Where are you from? We have Ukraine here. Great, Anastasia. Vietnam, Georgia, London, Italy, China, wow, all around the globe. Italy, Poland, David from Italy, Lebanon, Mikhail, Switzerland, Sina, India, Zurich, nice. Germany, all right, even Australia. Christian from Australia, from Australia. Wow, <laughs> all around the globe, different Must people. Must be pretty people. late uh, over there. <laughs> thanks for joining. Yeah, thank you for for joining us. Here. <laughs> thanks for being here. Great. And yeah, of course, also Andre is from uh, originally from Chernigiv, Ukraine. Yeah, now based in, in Bern. All right, Newcastle, Munich, Ryan from USA. Leonor from Portugal, my son, London, Turkey. Oh my God, it's 5 a.m. Christian, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> lovely, lovely having you here. Uh, all right. A good, um, way, a good way to start your day. <laughs> all right. Yeah, uh, yeah, guys, just tell us then why are you here? Why did you decide to join this webinar <laughs> even at 5 a.m.? Especially you, Christian, please. <laughs> um. Like in a few words, why, why are you attending this uh, webinar? What are your expectations? Learn more about consulting as a career. <laughs> yeah, it's because my mother asked me to do this webinar for you guys. <laughs> That's my motivation. To get some insights into how to crack the case interview. Nice. To see if consulting is the right thing for me. Great. All right. All right, thank you. I, I would like to learn how to approach the case study. You will. Find community, 
sorry, uh, find community to practice more, change ideas and experiences. To see Ladies and gentlemen, do you behind. really have also a particular question? Uh, what would, what specifically would you like to know about consulting or recruiting process? Uh, what would you like to learn during today's session? Maybe you could specify this, then we'll see how we can accommodate this, okay? And please also tell us, uh, yeah, what's your dream company? Michael said he wants to be comfortable with solving the case. Doing a triple career jump, changing industry, position, and geographic location for South. Well, that's very interesting. Yeah. Triple jump. Some pro tips specifically in, in for profitability case from Susan. All right, let's let's go then straight to let's, the business. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, can you please turn on your cameras and raise your hands? Maybe do you have any volunteers? Anyone from you who would be would like uh, to solve the case uh, together with me? Because it's always uh, more useful if we have uh, someone one, two, maybe three uh, person who, who do uh, this with us together, uh, like face to face, and maybe the others are supporting uh, and doing behind the scenes. Anton, do you see any hands? Because I can't see. I can, oh, now I see Susan. Yeah. Susan? Yes, Susan, Susan please. One. Yeah, maybe anyone else, uh, yeah, uh, sharing uh, or Alex, uh, okay. Yeah, uh, while we are still waiting for the third uh, uh, brave person, maybe it could be a man, uh, <laughs> just to make the quarter right. <laughs> uh, Susan, can you uh, also brief, just briefly introduce yourself because we have already spoken with uh, Alex. Uh, okay. Um, hi, uh, nice meeting you guys. Uh, um, so I um, also was a consulting club uh, member before, uh, work with uh, Vlada, uh, I'm Vinay here. Uh, so happy to join with you guys today. Uh, right now I'm also uh, kind of practicing cases with uh, different people from the club, um, preparing for interviews. Uh, I studied uh, engineering before and later changed to strategic management. So um, let's see <laughs> if, uh, if we can. Perfect. Yeah, so right. the case uh, today together. Yeah. Do you have any upcoming interviews? Uh yeah, uh, some I had some before, but uh, more in the planning. Okay, all right, cool. Yeah, then uh let's rock the stage. Uh I would say. Uh so do we have any third volunteer? <laughs> or people mm -hmm. are too shy. All right, yeah, yeah nevertheless. Right. I mean, we can start with two. And then we'll see how it goes. Uh, but you guys, feel free to write your answers uh, in the chat or write your questions. And Anton will help me to moderate this one. So we will then start the case uh, together with uh, Susan and Alex. All right. So I have a question to you. Are you ready? Ready to go? Yeah. Let's imagine that my name is um, Michelle. I'm mm -hmm. a project manager at the company of your choice. I don't know, let it be BCG uh, or Bain. Yeah, let it be BCG this time. And um, yeah, uh, you are playing yourself. You are the candidate. Uh, and I'm interviewing you from Zurich office. So you have a video conference. Okay, ready to go? We are now in the year 2016, not in nowadays, so it was still before COVID. And your client today is a regional bank, uh, retail and private bank uh, in one of the European countries. Mm -hmm. And um, it is facing a difficult situation. Basically, its uh, profits have been declining due to their ongoing low interest rates 
which were set by the European Central Bank in the past. Mm -hmm. And uh, further, it is suffering uh, from the decreasing number of customers. Mm -hmm. And the board of directors is also worried about digitization, whether the bank is adequately prepared for the digital age. Um, and they, they're wondering, they have requested BCG team, uh, and you are heading this team, uh, to, to help them out, address all these concerns, and develop the means for sustainable profitability increase uh, in the coming years. How would you go about that case? Yeah. Uh, so maybe uh, let me rephrase um, the question a little bit. Um, so uh, we are working for a client uh, who is a regional bank uh, in private and the retail sectors um, and then based in Europe. Um, and now they're concerned about the uh, decreasing profits and losing customers. And more, uh, moreover, there's uh, concerns about uh, the digitization um, in the future, so we want to come up with a sustainable solution to tackle these problems. Is that mm -hmm. right? Yes. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, is, uh, is sharing uh, also having, having is any there, questions? Is there anything to add? No, I'm just, uh, I'm actually just, you know, grasping and gaining as much as I can. So if okay. you need to right. contribute at uh, some point, let me know, but yeah. Sure. I mean, mm -hmm. I need you both to contribute. I need oh. you all <laughs> to contribute, <laughs> actually. All right. Sounds good. Uh, so, Susan mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. or um, Alex, uh, let's now play with you, Alex. Uh, yeah. Um, do you have any clarifying questions? Any questions that you would like to ask before moving to the structure? Mm -hmm. Okay, um, just one. Looking at mm -hmm. yeah, go ahead. Alex, you go ahead. I'm looking turn. at the case. Yes. No, Alex, it's your turn. You are my candidate. Uh, or mm -hmm. do you want uh, to be kicked off the process with BCG? <laughs> <laughs> no way. Just hold. It's all real now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Alex, you are out. <laughs> uh, Susan, <laughs> you go. Oh. Uh huh. Yeah. So I have maybe one question uh, related to the interest rates. Um, so uh, I guess uh, with the interest rate set by the central bank, uh, maybe in the coming years, um, it won't be much changes uh, um, that we expect, or would it be like uh, some uh, expected changes um, in the by the central bank in the coming years that we need to consider. Well, we are now in the year 2016, then, so yeah. since the last financial crisis, 2008, uh, especially after 2010, we have decreased, uh, the Central European Bank has decreased uh, their low interest rates. And um, it has been the decade between 2010 and 2022, when the mm -hmm. interest rates have, uh, have been kept extremely low. Yeah. Any mm -hmm. other questions that you might be asking? Um, uh, yeah, maybe also about the decreasing number of customers. Um, uh, is there any information on um, uh, how our competitors doing? Uh, like the how how the private bank is like in and in, in around Central Europe, um, in the whole industry. So are, are we doing? Um, uh, relatively better or worse than our competitors? Um, well, I don't have the information about uh, our competitors, but uh, in mm. fact, uh, a significant amount of uh, customers has been leaving um, uh, the bank uh, over the past at least five years, uh, or yeah, five to 10 years, I would say. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um... Mm hmm So um, um maybe um, do questions? we have yeah oh, there's a, there's uh, a reason. Anton, Anton, do we have uh, any other questions from the chat? Yeah, we have we actually have uh, a raised hand. Uh no raised Person. hands for the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, just uh, 
questions okay. from the chat. Okay, we have a, we have the, the very first question was from Michael. Is there any additional info you would like to tell us? Yeah, that was like a very general. Not at this stage. Not at this stage. Next right. question. Uh, well, the interest interest rates are sky high now, so maybe not relevant was, question. Uh, Next question. Not relevant. Um, review uh, review revenue sources first. Why the number of customers decreasing? Has the bank analyzed this? Um, good question. Yes, uh, we will be sharing this information while we will be going through the case. Mm -hmm. um, any other questions? What are the prominent reasons for customer attrition? That's exactly the same yeah. question. Next one. Their profitability target, they ask. Oh, I have been waiting for this question because in my opinion, it's the first and foremost question that needs to be asked in this at this stage of the case. It's basically, if we are talking about profitability, what is our target? So um, what should be the objective profitability and by when, so uh, by how much shall we increase it uh, and within what time frame? So the interviewer, I as Michael, uh, I would tell you, well, we would like to maximize the profitability of our bank and to reverse uh, revert the trend as much as possible, as fast as possible. Any other questions? Oh, that by the way, guys, I problems. see that uh, Anastasia is sharing um, the links to my social networks, so feel free to uh follow me or consulting masters uh in either facebook uh, instagram linkedin uh or subscribe to our youtube channel especially if you are watching this uh, video online uh, then put us a link uh i don't know a like uh leave your comments uh, and recommend this to the friends and subscribe to the channel uh if you would like to keep in touch all right, any other questions? Do we have information about the client's demographics that are leaving the bank? That's also a very good question that could be requested and shared during the uh, bank, uh, during the case. All right, good. Seems like uh, there are no other uh, relevant questions. Then, uh, Susan, Alex, mm -hmm. and everyone else, could you please take a moment of time, structure your thoughts and come up with a structure uh, to crack this case? Uh, so guys, work on this. You have not more than 60 seconds. Already brought by this case. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm going to get a number of customers. I have recognized that there is uh, one of our clients here, Julia Osherek. Uh, Julia, hi. I would also like to hear how do you structure the case? <laughs> so feel free to turn on your camera. <laughs> Let's see how you are advancing. All right, Susan, are you ready? What do you um, have? 
Yeah, uh, so maybe a quick thought um, that I can share at this point. Um, so I made it like a, a relatively simplified issue tree. Uh, so we start from profits. Um, maybe like quickly show the camera here. So then I split the question into uh, the number of customers and um, how much money we can get from uh, each customer to simplify the, the problem. So then we can uh, either start working on the increasing the number of customers or maybe uh, have uh, more revenues from each cost, existing customer. So with the customers, you can further break it down into maybe keeping the existing customers and uh, try to recruit more uh, new customers. Um, and for the uh, revenues from the profits from the customers, you can uh, achieve that by charging higher prices uh, for our existing services or maybe um, introduce uh, new services um, so that we can have uh, more product to offer. Um, so maybe we can um, have some more information on like uh, the customer base we have, like you said, uh, the demographics or like uh, the existing services that we have to see uh, which direction we can go into. Okay, all right. Uh, thank you, Susan. Any other aspects that you might be thinking of? Um, also, uh, yeah, we- Well, Susan, you thinking, uh, Alex, what's your structure? Honestly, I am uh, new new to this, so I'm actually trying to learn from you and understand how we okay. go about right. building a structure. Uh, and you know, does anyone else uh, has a reasonable structure and would like to try? Feel free to turn on your microphone or raise your hand so that at least I can first uh, see you and give you the word. Uh, Marcin uh, Roganovic. Marcin. Yes, uh, yeah, hello, can you hear me? Yes, just briefly introduce yourself okay. and uh, then we can start. Yeah, so my name is Marcin. Uh, I'm from Poland. I'm also the member of Graduate Consulting Club. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to get to, go and get to know some people, uh, train cases, uh, participate in the bridge program as well to learn how the consulting works. Uh, yeah, see if this is the thing for me and uh, be prepared for the interviews in the future. So, that's adoption, Martin. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay, so I did uh, like a simple, I structurize uh, the tree into internal company uh, issues, external competitors, and regulations within internal. I would like to tackle things related to our offer that we give to the clients and also the structure, uh, our internal structure of the bank. Uh, I would like to see which group of the people are we losing uh, and why, and uh, also how we are making the revenue uh, as the bank on which, which parts exactly we're making revenue and which part is our biggest uh, revenue source. Then looking at the external comp competitors bucket, uh, I would like to compare our offers with other bank offers and maybe their structure. And the third bucket of regulations, I would like to know what are the possible regulations for the future from the states, from the European Union. Um, so basically, I would be focusing on uh, since uh, we are losing customers, why we are losing customers. So basically, uh, what also is our internal structure of the bank? Maybe we are not efficient enough and we are making wrong decision. I mean, it's just the general thing. Where would you like to start the case and what kind of data would you request the, uh, me, Michelle, as an interviewer? I mean, I would definitely, since we are losing customers, I would like to request the data of what kind of customers we are losing, what, uh, what, yeah, what group age, for example. Um, uh, also, they were afraid of the digitalization. That's why, of digitization. That's why I asked uh, about the internal structure of the company. Maybe we mm -hmm. are not efficient enough. We are not getting to the customers. Where maybe marketing is not working correctly. So all these things. With, but if you if you ask me of data, I would ask uh, uh, on how we make revenue. What are our main revenue um, points? And some data on the our customers which groups are leaving us, basically, according to age, uh, wallet, mm -hmm. something like this. Perfect. All right. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for this, Marcin. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, any other volunteers or any other thoughts? 
guys, I give you five more seconds. Otherwise, we will proceed. And then moving on with uh, Susan and uh, Marcin. All right. Seems like no hands here. So uh, basically, uh, quick feedback. Uh, Susan and Marcin, uh, you together have pieces of information. But probably you, Susan, have just focused, uh, like your structure is very fragmented. It's focusing purely on profitability, which is the first and the most important issue, which is really good. So it addresses the first and the most important issue about profitability. But the problem is that it does not address at all the issues uh, with clients and especially with the digitization. So therefore, uh, the interviewer will already know at this particular moment that you are not passing the interview. By contrast, you marching, you're focusing greatly on the second and the third um, problem, basically on the reasons for customers leaving the bank and on the digitization issue. But you are almost forgetting about profitability issue. So you will not pass neither. But if we combine you both <laughs> into one approach, that could work. <laughs> <laughs> Helpful. All right. Before we move there, I have a question to to you, uh, Susan, to you, Marcin, and to everyone else. Generally speaking, what could be the reasons for profits decline on the high level? So Susan, not enough Marcin. people borrow. Um, not enough people borrowing money from the bank and the low interest rate that they charge on the customers. Yeah, and, and if you look at it from the uh, top-down perspective, a little bit even higher from the higher level than you currently are. Like um, lower ma uh, margin because of the cost is higher than before. Mm -hmm. Yes, why? We are getting closer, yeah. Any other ideas? Inflation. What are, what, what are profits, generally speaking? The revenue minus costs. Yes. And if we're talking about revenues or costs in profitability, what might be happening to them? If the profit, I mean, the if profits uh, is the function of uh, revenues and co minus costs, yes, margin. Tell me. So either either our our costs are increasing uh, highly, or our incomes, our revenues are decreasing. Yeah. So maybe one, maybe both. Precisely, or maybe even all together, because it could be. Uh, basically, four types of the reasons: declining revenues at constant costs or increasing costs and constant revenues, or increasing costs and declining revenues, or even a greater decline of revenues than of costs, if we see it from the dynamic perspective. And that's now uh, your structure, basically, ideally to solve this case, should be focusing on these three issues. Uh, and this, uh, this is like the ideal issue tree which you can build on later. Number one, addressing the first issue, profitability analysis, where you go deeper into revenues and costs and you segment them. So you have overall profitability development for the last 10 years, which you will request. Then uh, segmented by revenues and costs and revenues could be segmented by several revenue streams um as well as uh costs to see structurally where the problem really uh, lies then second part of the that's that's what susan was talking about then second branch uh, should be focused on the customer retention that's that's about the reasons for customers leaving the bank that's about um customer segmentation uh, that's basically all what Martin was talking about in uh, his structure. And the third one is digitization. 
so basically, what does digitization mean? It means it has two hands. On the one hand, you have um, uh, front end, basically the solutions uh, like digital offerings, digital products, digital channels, uh, how, how the client is communicating with the customer. So front end is everything what is visible for the client. And back end are the, all the processes that are behind uh, the, uh, the scenes in the bank. Okay. By the way, uh, Anton, please help me if you see uh, any comments uh, or questions uh, in the chat. Feel free to interrupt me because uh, I cannot follow uh, this simultaneously. Okay. Thank you. All right. So let's move on. And Susan, um, you want to drive profitability analysis. You requested me for the data, and let's imagine that I gave you the following information. That's a product overview where you could see volume, revenue, costs for the years 2005 through 2015 for five different product categories. So what do you see? Can you maybe tell me as a candidate how would you go about this exhibit as an, uh, in a real interview? Mm -hmm. um, so like by first look, um, you see uh, five different uh, products that we offer. Um, so we can, um, on this dimension, check the um, differences in revenues and costs for these five products. So um, for example, in 2005, uh, you have, uh, um, portfolios as the highest um, like um, profit um, profitable uh, product per uh, per transaction. So, but then you, you you need to also cross check with the volume to see which product has the biggest uh, profits. So you can have that information from the five products, and then you need to go uh, across the timeline from two thousand five to two thousand fifteen. Uh, to see uh, which products we we are um, actually having the decreasing or increasing profits, to see which uh, which areas we can maybe work on in the future. So more relevant relevantly, we can look at 2015 uh, because we are at 2016. So that's more relevant now. Also, um, so we need to maybe do a quick calculation about uh, which products are more profitable at the moment and um, throughout these 10 years. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, Marcin, uh, how would you analyze this exhibit and how would you drive uh, the, the conclusion? So I comparing here 2005, 10 and 15, we have different products from, from our client and amount of, of the service, let's say, revenue for unit, I guess, and the cost, the unit cost. And so first thing we can see that in comparison 2005 and 10 in 2015, the volume of every of the of the uh, offer of the product that we have goes down. Uh, mm, yeah, the, the most differences maybe for fixed deposits, 1,500 to 1,100, but all of them are, we are decreasing amount yeah, of, of the products that we are selling. Uh, yeah, the revenue seems also to, to go down for, for every one of them and cost seems for me to go down a little bit as well. So I would say that the problem with profitability for us is that, yeah, again, that the cost cost doesn't seem to grow, uh, our own costs, the revenues, because maybe of the prices, or I don't know, the revenue is going down and the volume of sold goods, let's say is going down. So that's how I would analyze this, this data. So it's not about the cost, seems to me. Yeah. Marcin, great insights, exactly. Uh, guys, would you like to know uh, how would the real consultants go about uh, analyzing this exhibit? What would he or she tell? It? Just uh, put a plus or say yes into the chat. 
so that we can see that you are following the discussion. Okay, perfect. Yeah, indeed, uh, Martin, uh, that, uh, that was very close to what the real consultants would actually say about it. So uh, the real consultant, uh, if I if I were still in the interview, I would do the following. So uh, I would say, uh, Susan, first of all, thank you very much for sharing this information. Um, I can see that this exhibit reflects the product overview for the years 2005, 2010 and 2015 for five respective uh, products, um, saving accounts, check accounts, portfolios, fixed deposit, and call money. By the way, do you know what is call money? That will uh, be something that I will ask the interviewer because I don't know what call money is. Uh, and here we can also see the graduation by volume, revenue, and cost for these uh, years. So what I can generally observe is that between 2005 and 2010, uh, the volume uh, has been more or less the same or even slightly increasing in some cases. But uh, between 2010 and 2015, the volume has dropped massively and has become even lower than of 2005. So uh, all in, uh, for all five product categories, the volume has dropped, for example, from 1,000 to 800 uh, items uh, uh, for, uh, for saving accounts or... Um, between 900 uh, to 700 uh, for call money. Uh, what we can also see is that the revenues uh, have been decreasing as well as the costs, which is interesting, but it seems like the, the profit margin has been decreasing. The profit margin, I mean revenues minus costs, um, because if we used to have uh, 20, uh, 10 euros uh, for saving accounts of profit margin in 2005. Uh, in 2015, we only have 8 euros. And this problem is constant across all the product categories. So uh, based on this, I can't say that there, there is a structured product uh, problem in any particular uh, product. It seems to be an overall trend that we are losing the volume and we are losing the profit margin while both revenues and both costs are decreasing but costs uh, the decrease of cost cannot compensate the decrease in revenues so it's interesting therefore i would like to focus on the first aspect do we have any data uh, to better understand what's happening on the volume side that's how I would drive this discussion. Remember one thing. Um, if you uh, are given this information, no matter what the exhibit, first of all, you need to explain the exhibit. What do you see? Then you need to bring your insights in the second step. And then you need to do something about those insights, like put them into the bigger picture. So summarize your insights and tell me Okay, what does this mean? What do you see? And what is next? Like, what is your, obviously, the next step? So let's imagine that Marcin basically uh, came to the conclusion, yes, it's a problem on the volume side and problem on the uh, profit margin side. So, and he now wants to analyze the volume, which is directly correlating uh, with the client side. So uh, in terms of clients, Marcin, can you remind us what, what is the information that you would request the interviewer to share with you uh, to, to analyze what's happening on the client side? So I could request the information, uh, yeah, if we have it about maybe how, how wealthy or how rich are the clients, uh, yeah, I think the group age, right? Maybe group age would also help. We can see if these are young, older people. So that kind of information I would ask. Uh, you also mentioned during uh, your first speech about the structure that you would be requesting for the reasons of, of customers leaving the bank. 
uh, that is even more important than the mm -hmm. age. But if you want, we can basically start with the age groups. Here you go, guys. So Marcin, what do you see? And what are your conclusions? So I could see the data that it's showing age structure of the living customers uh, divided into, into certain groups uh, expressed in percentages. And uh, from the data, we can see that the group that mostly is living is between young, young adults, 25, 29 uh, years of age, also 80, 24, 30, 39. And basically the older the customers are, the less they are living. So rather the younger groups and uh, probably not so rich uh, groups and uh, yeah, of the customers are, are leaving our, uh, our bank. That's what I would say. Mm -hmm. so it's okay. Yeah. All right, sounds good. Uh, what does it mean? What are the next steps? Uh, so maybe I would like to to ask uh, to 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 see what kind of offers do we have uh, as a bank? You know, maybe some of them are more suitable for the older people rather than the rather than the young ones. So okay, all right, uh, good. Then I would like to share with you this piece of information as well. Okay, so again, here we have the reasons for customers leaving our bank. Uh, again, expressed in percentages. Uh, we are comparing high fees to few digital offers, slow processes, intrusive offering of product products, and complicated online banking. And it seems that the um, yeah, so these are all quite uh, prevalent reasons uh, because even for complicated online banking, like fifty percent of living customers apparently left because of it. Mm, yeah, but we see a uh, high fees uh, to a few digital offers and since our customers also are concerned about digitization, uh, yeah, maybe we can go a little bit into this direction as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. If Definitely high, concerned, high fees. If you are concerned about digitization, what would you like to know? Um, how would you how, drive the how, discussion? So by digitization, I mean the digital solutions. Yeah, I mean, both for banks and both for customers. So here I would like to see, uh, for example, how, uh, how well is the online banking design? Because we can see from the data that also complicated online banking, almost 50% of, of customers indicated that. So this is a little bit related to me with, uh, with this, a few digital offers, so maybe maybe basically the online banking tool. It's not very convenient. That's why older people are staying with us, since they maybe they are not using so much these online tools. They do things more in the traditional way. So I would go a little bit more into maybe, uh, yeah, our digital online banking uh, website availability, how we uh, sell it and commercialize, how we advertise it. That these would be my directions. Okay, any other thoughts either from the chat or by raising your hands? Eva? We? Oui? Yeah, uh, so I was thinking with digitalization, we have two parts. You have the internal bank part, which is related to the slow processes and the high fees with them. And then you have the client part, which is to few digital offers and the complicated online banking. And since you probably want a quick solution, I would first focus uh, in the internal part in the slow processes. Because uh, yeah, setting up a new platform, it takes quite a lot of time and you might be losing customers uh, during that process. So maybe first see if um, there is a way to make the bank more efficiently, which would also reduce the fees then or reduce the costs. Okay, sounds good, reasonable. Yeah, any other ideas? Anton, do we have anything in the chat or anyone wants to raise a hand? Yeah, Ashish is asking in the chat, age 18, 20, 24, less income, more uh, transactions, high fees, not suitable. 
this is comment. Okay, but that's not the question or yeah. not the summary. Only we have some All right, give him. Um, Yeah, uh, um, I just wanted to um, um, add something, just just the idea, because I'm thinking simultaneously with you. So I was wondering uh, during the analysis why we didn't mention about the sectors, what kind of sectors uh, these people belong who are living, whether this is agro sector or this is uh, some um, um, production or something else. So we could completely um look we're uh, talking about retail and private banking so uh we're not talking about sme small medium uh, enterprises so we're not talking about businesses we are talking about individuals um so, so we don't order, so we don't have this it. this question is not relevant okay um, all right all right so uh, that you to that yeah, but I, I would like to bring some other ideas as well beside that. So um, we are talking about the, um, the the cost is also important when we are talking about the profitability, right? So when we are talking in general for the country where the interest rates are very, uh, very high. So the key in this point would be uh, bringing, so maybe bringing some international funds, which could bring much lower interest rates. So we could use these lower interest rates to decrease our cost and eventually to, and eventually right. to. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> stop. <laughs> uh, just probably get yourself uh, familiar with the financial system first. You have two major players, which is federal uh, reserve system in the US and European Central Bank um in in the european zone so uh <laughs> there is no fund uh, in the world that uh, that can compete uh with uh, with them they are simply the two regulators one for the us dollar and the other one for for you so therefore it doesn't make sense all right anyway thanks for trying um daniela Dora. okay thank you Daniela, it would be nice if I could hear you. Sorry, I still can't read from your lips. <laughs> All right, we, we have some technical issues with Daniela and while she is working on her audio, Marcin. Yeah, maybe just one thing that comes to my mind since we have to drive the case, so maybe since we discuss customers and we have this high fees and two digital offers, maybe further I we can ask for the data uh, exactly what are those fees, what kind of fees we have, or what kind of digital offers we have, and how we compare to competition. Since customers okay. are leaving, that would be something that I would ask maybe to drive yeah. the case. Yeah. I'm not sure if that's well. Good. Well, generally speaking, if I was a consultant, I would be having after having a look at this uh, picture, I would be trying to understand better our offerings and how do we distribute, how do we communicate, how do we interact uh, with our clients. So, uh, mostly focusing on the front end of the digitization, which will bring me to the uh, next exhibit um about customer interaction a day on average where we have different um uh different channels so marcin what do you see on the graph what do i see on the graph please drive the discussion it's still an interview okay so we have again uh we have uh, customer interactions Per day on average uh, for the years 2005, 10, 15, and in the industry uh, for outlet, email, telephone, online banking websites, and other. Mm. By the way, guys, so, if you have any insights, feel free to drop them in the chat so that we can refer to them later on. We, we have a 
question from Daniela. It's actually related to a previous slide. I'm, I'm not sure if you hear me now. Oh, yes, now we're better. Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah, I mean, I can also speak it up, <laughs> I guess. So so my, my question was regarding this group that are leaving, like, so the young people, and I would like to see whether the bank has any solutions for this targeted group, because, I mean, if you could target this group, then you probably will get some kind of revenue anyway, right? Even if it's maybe you make it slightly cheaper, but then you have more clients. Thank you, Daniela. I don't have any data to share. Mm -hmm. That would be the interviewer's answer. Uh, yes, Martin. So what do you see and what, how we move on? Yeah, I'm a little bit uh, strange to me too far. 2005, 10, 15, and then industry. I, I'm not sure <laughs> a little bit with this chart. Industry benchmark. So competitors, basically. We compare. So... Uh, it's an overview of uh, our general distribution uh, distribution channels uh, retrospective for the years 2005 through 2015, the development in gray, mm -hmm. uh, in light gray, and then in dark gray is comparison with uh, other industry players. Okay, so it seems that uh, within this, this time, the... No. Yeah, maybe someone can. All right. If that. anyone wants to drive uh, the discussion, feel free to raise the hands as well. Yes, why? Yeah, Agnes. So um, in this graph, it shows across the years what our bank offering uh, via channels versus the industry offering. So we can see that what we are kind of strong in, let's say, outlet, uh, we are better than the industry. However, like in other channels like email, um, online banking, website, even others, we are way lower than what the industry is offering. So what it's telling me somehow is what the other competitors give uh, offering is very different from what our bank direction is. So that might indicate um, the customer wants something different from, from what the um, like, Okay, let me rephrase the let's see. It seems that the industry offering something very different from what we are offering. It might indicate that a customer interest is different from what we are offering. Okay. That's me explain the problem. A, yeah, good observation. Good one. Uh, anything to add here? Mm, maybe I would like to dig into more the other because that seems quite a high um numbers but we have nothing around it that can maybe be a growth area we can look into yeah absolutely i have been waiting for this insight because uh you should have asked uh, uh basically the interviewer can you tell me what is other because it seems that the substantial amount is uh, of the market is focused there and the other is nothing else that mobile app which we don't have all right, amazing. Then I would suggest let's move on to the next exhibit. What do you see here? Way. Oh, sorry. I'm on the hope. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So in this explicit showing the percentage amount could deal close. Um, again, our offerings compared to the industry. So it's kind of selling, telling it's a point of sales, if I understand correctly, how we make our deals happening. So we can see that, again, outlet makes a lot of our sales coming from, then followed by telephone and email, and but very few on online banking website and others again. And so I can um, derive the insight is what we are putting an effort in the outlet is um, not uh, not where the industry is offering. I will look into more what we are missing, like online banking website and the others again here, which means we are not offering where the customer is trying to go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. What about the next one? And here the table shows the profit per deal close. Branch is the same as industry. So it's just the last column for you to know. 
Okay. So here it shows a per channel over the years, how much profit we made compared to the industry. And just to quickly look at it, that we can see that um, our main income from the outlet, for example, the profit across the years declined significantly, more than 50%. And even though if the benchmark is the same, which means that we lose profit from it. Um, and looking at the others, let's say benchmark from the industry, we, we are comparable for our outlet and telephone. But again, we significantly lower profit than email, online banking, website, and others, which I think is really just synchronized with the previous exhibit, which we are not strong in those channels. So we are really like losing profit because we don't have the income from those channels. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Yeah. If, if I was a real consultant or if I were in your shoes, I would also uh, try to quantify mm. uh, basically um, uh, in order to came up with a calculation of what could be the revenue potential. Like, uh, I mean, we used to have in the outlet, uh, we used to earn 50 euros and now we are earning uh, last year just 20 euros. So it's a profit uh, decreased by 30 euros. Then on email, we are earning six euros, but the industry is earning 35. So we have 29 euros of uh, potential. A telephone, we are in the benchmark. Online banking, we do two versus 25. So we have 23 uh, euros uh, of improvement. Uh, website we do two out of 15 and yeah uh, other or mobile banking we do zero so we have that's like the one of the biggest uh, layers definitely where I would drive the discussion forward but unfortunately we don't have that much time so therefore I as Michael as an interviewer I would kindly request you why you, Martin, you, Daniela, uh, you, Susan, and everyone else in the room to think about um, the, inter the CEO of the company is coming in uh, three minutes, let's say. And I would kindly request you to prepare your final recommendation for this case. All right, so please take your time, review what was the case question and case objectives and come up with a recommendation which should be no longer than 90 seconds, basically elevated speech. And while you are doing this, I think that uh, my team has shared some information again with you. Oh. Yeah, so it's the links to the website and uh, basically uh, to to our social media. Uh, so feel free to follow us um, online on LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram uh, to keep in touch uh, for the further events uh, or acquire any additional information about our services and about consulting. Anyone ready and wants to raise the hand? Margin. What do you have? So uh, I would summarize it in the way that uh, the client asks us how to deal with the situation of uh, low. I'm CEO, of the I'm your client. I already know uh, what I'm requesting okay. you to do. So uh, my solution uh, would be to focus on the uh, digitization, 
mainly on offering to our customers more uh, mobile uh, possibilities, um, making better websites and uh, putting more attention and developing online banking because these are these are the the biggest problems for a company if we compare ourselves to the uh, to the branch we are uh, losing a lot of money on this. Uh, this should, in my opinion, increase the amount of the customers um, that are going apparently to another banks. Of course, there are some risks um, related to the solutions. Mainly the, the first one would be that we, we may not have the know-how. So it will take uh, probably some investment from our side, uh, which is also always a little bit risky. Um, but we can all always uh, yeah, try to uh, try to see how other companies are doing that um, uh, gets specialists in online banking and digitization in order to solve this problem. So again, I would go for to increase amount of the customers again. I would focus on uh, on this on this three things: mobile websites, online banking. There are some risk related, but it's definitely worth it in my opinion to increase the revenues. Okay. All right. Interesting. Thank you very much. Um, Wei? So, um, CEO, so we have um, discussed this case. We tried to analyze a problem with three layers. First, about the profitability. We saw that it's not really is driven by the def, uh, decline of volume. And because of that, we look into the customer segment. We look at why we cannot retain a customer we saw that the main group lost is the younger group. So then we also look at their preferences. And we found out that mainly because um, um, the current bank offering probably not matching the what the market are offering. So the industry, we th there's a mismatch between what the industry looking for and the current customer. And that is kind of causing them, we cannot retain them. And third, we look at um, the digitalization concern. So we we saw that from the profit per deal for channels, there's also some missed opportunity for the company we should look into. For example, some channels that we never touch on like website and um, email and the others. So I would look further what we can offer based on point of sales and also product um, that are for our potential um, increase of revenue and profit. All right, good, thank you. Uh, wait, uh, Daniela. Yeah, uh, so I think I agree totally like a little bit like with the previous speakers and I'm not gonna summarize again the whole <laughs> problem, just quickly. <laughs> I want so, to hear yours. Uh, so my, my Forget thing about is that, previous. I said not just a summary of the problem. <laughs> I'm not doing that. So the thing is I there could be, in my opinion, a quick fix and a long-term fix. So a quick fix would be that of training the staff because it seems also a little bit of like people not actively using the other channels, like not pushing the clients to use the other channels. So like they are being more time consuming on like when it's like, contact, like contacting the clients and so on. And so like one thing that is quick fix, I believe it's uh, yeah training the staff to, to be more approachable from a digital point of view, like from virtual setups. And then um, the other thing is like market like marketing. So like to make it available, like to the clients visible that there are these services because they seem to have them in place that they're not just, they're just not used. And then a long-term, because it might take, it would take so much time to like set it up instead of the mobile solutions or other um, digital um, products. But this probably needs a longer, uh, strategy like long-term strategy yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> all right sounds good thank you daniela uh anyone else would like to try susan or anyone else um yeah i can quickly summarize my thoughts um so to tackle our uh, three main problems with decreasing profits losing customers and um um, improving uh, improvement of our digitalization. Um, I think there's three points we need to address. Uh, so first, we see from our product offerings that we have decreasing volumes in our um, uh, transactions uh, over the t past ten years, with also uh, decreasing profits um, in each category. 
especially with portfolios. So that's what we might want to take a closer look on. And secondly, we're losing um, our customers mainly from the age 18 to 49 years old. They take account um, like 80% of our customer, uh, losing customers. Um, and that leads to our uh, third, um, third point with digitalization because these age groups um, are highly uh, relying on digitalizations and uh, like uh, new and like online offerings. Uh, so with online banking and websites, uh, we are actually falling behind with our industry uh, uh, average uh, levels. So we need to work on the uh, aspects in, in the online banking and websites uh, mostly. So. Mm -hmm. All right, Susan. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, yeah. Very good, uh, actually, a good uh, recommendation. Um, okay, cool, guys. Um, would you actually like to know how I, as an interviewer, and my colleagues used to assess you as candidates uh, in the past? Uh, like, which criteria uh, we applied when we were sitting in front of the candidates and having a conversation? Or what do you think? Uh, just put yourself in my shoes. If you were an interviewer and you would be uh, assessing a candidate uh, in an interview, what would be the criteria that you would use? So for Maybe example, can how can I distinguish between, shall I take Daniela, Susan, uh, Wei, or uh, Marchin to the next round? What would be the assessment criteria? What do you think? Asking the right question, structure the thoughts, and be confident. Okay, yeah, definitely that's part of it. Yeah, any other thoughts? Martin, you raise your hand. Um, yeah, I would say that coachability. So once we have some problems, how well we deal with the case uh, after being given some small advices or help, if we were able to go on, that what I would value as well. Not always. We know everything, but if we can do something with the help we got, that, that's a plus. Mm, yeah, to a certain extent, I agree. But if I have 10 candidates and I need to select two, uh, of them for the next interview rounds, <laughs> I would go for the two best ones. So uh, any other ideas about uh, criteria to assess? Um, Daniela? I was thinking, I was thinking also like um, when someone, for example, depending like on how their solutions are, like if their solutions are really creative or if, if it's like, following a, like a standardized uh, way that could be taught or something like this. So more like on their flexibility of mind, like how can this adapt their solutions to a different problem? So and how creative can they be? Okay, all right. Yeah, uh, good, thank you. Uh, guys, do you actually, would you like to know the secret? Would you like to know what happens behind the scenes and what the real consultants actually, what's the methodology that they apply to assess the candidates? People are excited, Andre. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, sure. Then I will just quickly reveal this uh, for you. So, um, when I was interviewing people, uh, we apply a um, very structured approach uh, in the following methodology. So, uh, of course, there is a part for personal feed part of the interview, which is also equally uh, important and equally big. Um, but as for the case, we were assessing four key uh, parameters. We were basically having a look uh, into uh, analytical skills, critical thinking and problem solving, as well as creative thinking and diversity of thought and ability to learn, which is coachability. Creative thinking has been, and diversity of thought has been addressed by Daniela. Yeah, but um, 
um, it's also very critical to uh, assess whether the candidate can think uh, analytically and uh, especially critical thinking for the problem solving. So for example, how does the problem is structured? Uh, uh, how, how does the candidate uh, does hypothesis? How he, can, he or she can generate uh, insights and it's all about driving the case. So that's why I was a little bit pushy on you because I, I am in the seat of the interviewer uh, and you are the candidate. You should be driving the discussion. Uh, my role is to play a future client of yours. So if you are a future consultant, I'm your future client. Therefore, I give you the task and I'm paying you money. And <laughs> sometimes it's... Uh, up to 2,000 or 3,000 euros uh, per day uh, that I that my company pays to your company for your work. So my expectations are pretty high. Uh, that's why you need to be in the driving seat. And I really want you to understand this. That's, uh, that's very important. Yeah, and then I am basically assessing you to, to a very simple... Uh, parameters uh, from uh, one to five, where one is exceeding my expectations and five is below my expectations. So therefore, I would say, okay, uh, for example, um, analytical skills, marching, somehow maybe between two and three, uh, critical thinking and problem solving uh, was two. Uh, way uh, creative thinking and diversity of thought was one. Um, ability to learn was high among uh, all the candidates. So therefore, uh, the average would be between two and three, but there will be definitely the candidates uh, out of 10. If there were 10 people uh, whom I have interviewed, there would probably have been other one or two candidates, which will be like star candidates. And therefore, they will go to the next uh, interview round. So I hope, uh, does that all make sense to you? Is it uh, interesting Yeah, and useful to understand the interviewer's uh, standpoint? <laughs> um, yeah, I just wanted to uh, showcase this to you. All right, then if, if that was interesting for you, I'm uh, pretty sure that the next part of the content will be interesting uh, as well. I just want to quickly summarize that uh, uh, we are helping um, students, MBAs and young professionals like you guys through all the stages uh, of the process. So whether it's uh, from the very beginning with defining your application strategy and approach through polishing your documents uh, um, to even help you get a chance for a real interview because actually 90% of the resumes uh, will be simply outscreened uh, if they are not good ones. And especially through uh, polished CVs together with your networking efforts, uh, according to our methodology, you can really guarantee yourself an interview invite uh, with the most prestigious companies. And then what we do, we usually help um, and train people for the interviews, um, give the end-to-end -end guidance and uh, um, help sometimes even with offer negotiations and uh, help you to become outstanding consultants and pass the probation periods uh, as well as uh, yeah, uh, simply uh, get your salaries, raises, uh, bonuses, etc. all that stuff uh, uh, very high and to get promoted uh, faster. So we do provide comprehensive uh, advice on both uh, application, interview prep stage, as well as uh, the real life consulting uh, stage. Yeah, we also offer quite a lot of uh, interesting um, uh, video courses for self-preparation on every of this material whether it's application strategy, documents review, networking, case parts, uh, uh, consulting interview prep, or personal fit part of the interview. And what we have just covered today, so for example, uh, we, we do have uh, specialized courses uh, for, 
where sessions with uh, our experts have been recorded uh, since it's not only me in the team, but we also do have other experts uh, who used to work with BCG, McKinsey, Bain and Kearney. Um, and I used to work with RB um, and been recruiting candidates in, in, for DACH region, Germany, Austria, Switzerland, Eastern Europe and the Middle East. So we are we have combined all our expertise uh, to help you to really get ready uh, for the interviews because being invited for the for an interview is already a big deal, <laughs> but only actually one candidate out of ten will will get an offer. Uh, so therefore, it's uh, really competitive, and you need to be uh, very ready and very very polished. Uh, um, in order to make it to the bar. Um, so my team will now share some of the links. Uh, for example, you can uh, visit our website, uh, check everything online. Also see numerous video testimonials from our clients because we have, up till the date, uh, we have helped uh, roughly 600 uh, clients. And I myself, uh, I have more than three thousand hours uh, I don't know <laughs> I actually stopped counting at some point of time during my time at RB um, in fact uh, I interviewed 115 people uh, in different regions and yeah so therefore I, I want to share this knowledge with you I, I want you to benefit uh, from it and no matter whether it's um, uh, help with your application, personal feed part, case part, uh, or whatsoever, or you need career advice, uh, feel free to get in touch with us. And if you are really interested in consulting, uh, I actually even want to give you a gift because I want to do something for free. Uh, you, you have a chance to apply for a strategy uh, call with uh, one of our experts uh, in the team, which will bring you a lot of clarity uh, on where you stand, what you need to achieve and how to actually achieve this, uh, where uh, one of the experts uh, will analyze the situation together with you, align on your objectives and give you all the clarity and advice. In order to do so, feel free to send your CV uh, to us to customer.service at consulting-masters.com. Um, and we will be reaching out to best candidates who really have the chances for consulting uh, after upon their applications and offer our service and uh, support. So uh, feel free to use this chance, uh, send the email to, to us uh, with your uh, CV and your brief motivation. And then let's start work together. Georgie is already looking towards to hearing from many of you. And I also want to um, um, recommend you to subscribe and hit the notification button to our YouTube channel, uh, which you can find uh, as Consulting Masters or simply by following the link here um, uh, from the chat, because over there you will find quite a lot of useful material, which we are posting on the daily or weekly basis with, um, with useful content, uh, with our customers' experiences, with the recordings of all the previous webinars. So there is a huge database even uh, for free, which is available for you. Um, and therefore, uh, simply subscribe uh, to YouTube and share this video, leave a, a comment, put a like, or hit the notification button uh, if you like it and share it with your friends. And yeah, we will be more than happy to help you. I'm also looking towards to answering your questions. So feel free to raise the, uh, to uh, write them into the chat. But maybe just the last one thing is um, every week we do special events. And uh, next week, we actually want to talk about consulting myths uh, and consulting reality. 
together with you and uh, we want uh, to answer your questions uh, about consulting the application process or whatever you might be thinking about it. Uh, so it's going to happen on next Monday, uh, 21st uh, at 19 o'clock. And if you visit our website, which will be now appearing in the chat, uh, you can register yourself uh, for the link. Yeah, and now we are heading towards the Q&A session. So feel free either to raise your hands uh, or to write your um, questions here and also share some feedback with me. Like, how did you like the event? How did you like the case? Uh, if there are any questions, so I'm looking towards your discussion. Let's start with Wei. <laughs> so just call me Agnes. But thanks, Andre. I think the, the the section is great. I really enjoyed it, especially when you say no, this is a relevant. I think we also need to learn from that. Um, I have a quick question. Uh, when when you were in the session of jumping between the um, exhibits, usually can we ask for like a I don't know, 30 seconds to organize the four, at least do some quick calculation before or in that scenario that, for example, what I'm trying to do um, is not that good to ask for that. Just better just jump a bit and then do a calculation in your head when you are seeing the numbers. Um, it depends. Uh, you will be having the interviewers which will give you the time but you can also get the interviewers which will not give you uh, who will not give you the time mm. so it could be both basically Should we always but, ask but but, then... but but it will be a wiser idea if you would request for some time the interviewer can always say no mm -hmm. uh, uh, but sometimes they will give you the time so therefore request for the time okay if you need it Thanks. And, and about exhibit, remember one thing. So tell the interviewer what you see, uh, do the calculations or generate insights. And yeah, tell the interviewer what, what, does these, uh, what do these insights really mean? And where would you like to drive the discussion uh, in the next step? Okay, great, thank you. Thank you too. Wait, by the way, great participation and uh, yeah, uh, great uh, summary. Uh, my compliment. Thank you, thank you. All right, so, um, any questions in the chat or any raised hands? Gibby. By the way, how did you guys like the webinar? How did you... Uh, like the case, uh, maybe some. Sort yeah. Of... So, Andre, I I, wa I wanted to talk about that. First of all, I want to tell you uh, thank you very much for this really amazing uh, case analysis. It was very, very, very good and a lot of insights. So that's why my question would be: uh, I'm really uh, wanting to find some other. Uh, case solving um, cases or uh, I, I want to ask people who are involved here so maybe you have guys uh, somewhere a chat or a whatsapp group or something where we could just meet and exchange ideas or even to meet each other and not to bother Andre for all the time to help us to solve the question so we could at least uh, do the quick uh, uh, interactions and discuss very small cases or just e uh, exchanging ideas, anything like that where we could interact more frequently rather than just occasionally just one case, because this case is really good, right? So we need to do the more this kind of stuff. So uh, on a lower on a lower level, not involving Andre all the time. So I'm, mm -hmm. I, I, I was asking, we don't want to bother you on on a daily basis. So maybe someone has this group or 
any other yeah, sure. I mean, community? Uh, by, yeah. by, by the way, uh, give a thank you for your feedback uh, and for for your question. Um, I I did not present it here, uh, but we also do offer um, services uh, with with the real community. So where you become part of community in our so-called VIP programs where you can practice also uh, cases together with other members uh, of community who are preparing for their upcoming interviews. Uh, we do, we help them to organize uh, quite a lot peer-to-peer -peer sessions uh, and you can learn from others. So we, we have created a context uh, which is really uh, productive where you can work together with all other people uh, across the globe who uh, who are uh, applying to the leading consulting firms, MBB, Tier 1, Tier 2, um, and come together uh, with them under our guidance uh, towards your common goal, basically getting a job offer in uh, consulting. So, I mean, I would simply recommend you uh, feel free to get in touch with our team and you can take it from there. Okay, thank you so much. All right, good. Any other questions uh, or feedback or appraisals uh, or whatsoever? Raise hands. We have some questions from Instagram. Okay. I'm asking what skills or behaviors do you believe a consultant needs to be successful in this industry? In behavior or what was... What skills or behaviors do you believe a consultant okay. needs? Um, yeah, I would say that uh, this is a good question, uh, most common one. Um, and um, to my, uh, it's my personal uh, point of view. Uh, first of all, you need to be a really good communicator. Uh, that's number one and foremost, because uh, consulting is a client's business. Uh, so you need to uh, know how to handle people. Uh, you need to be yeah, a little bit an extrovert uh, in that sense. Uh, uh, you need to know how to uh, do stakeholder management, so how to handle your uh, bosses, how to handle your project manager, partner, how to handle your clients. Uh, that's first and foremost. Then, of course, you need to be very good in structuring things, in communicating uh, it rightly, because you need to very often convince the people. Um, you need to be also a very good uh, problem solver and quick learner. Uh, to grasp the things quickly and break them down uh, routinely. Uh, I would say, especially in Germany or German-speaking countries, it would require a lot of discipline from your side. Um, and last but not least, uh, I always recommend to have a good sense of humor because <laughs> so many situations uh, yeah, will be uh, so weird. Uh, so, yeah. Just enjoy it. Thanks. All right, cool. Anton, any other questions? A quite important one. Is German 100% required for application in the dark area? In Germany and in Austria, mostly. Mm -hmm. uh, in Switzerland, to a less extent. But uh, still, so it basically depends on the office and on the position. Uh, there are some positions uh, where German is not mandatory, but I would say that knowing German is a huge advantage. And uh, yeah, it, it was not an easy ride for me when I came from Ukraine uh, to Southern Italy. And like you guys, you just suffered a little bit from solving a case in English. But imagine that you need to solve the case in German, <laughs> which is per se even harder uh, as a language. And then the interviewer tells you like, okay, now let's jump from German, let's continue in English. And then in 20 minutes, oh, let's go back uh, to German. Oh, so no. I thought that my head was like freaking out completely. 
because my mother tongue is Ukrainian and Russian. Uh, and I, I was thinking like, oh, Jesus, like switching from one foreign language to the other one <laughs> yeah. was, was a joke. But that motivated me to do one year long uh, English German uh, translation course where I simply worked only on uh, translations between German uh, to English directly um, without involving my mother tongues. Yeah, because I'm asked to have an interview in German and I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> I can help you to, to get ready in German for the German interviews as well. It's a kind problem. Nah, you say it goes a problem. Yeah, we'll see. Let's take it from there. Okay, All right, uh, guys, if there, uh, if there is nothing to add from your side, um, I would really like to say a huge thank you for every one of you uh, participating today. I would like uh, to uh, give a special compliment to the team, Anton, uh, Anastasia, who made it possible, and of course to the GCC uh, Society. Um, so thank you very much for joining us, uh, feel free to join us in our future events. So we're get in touch uh, with um, our uh, client manager. And yeah, thanks a lot. Uh, have a nice evening and take care. Thanks, bye. Thank you guys.